How's it going today, loyal Kingdom Eyes? Dwayne. It is Jasmine. We're Dwayne and Jasmine. We have the odd ones out getting lost at camp. Geronimo. For Geronimo. Damn. You won. Girl, that's a good thing. That's yeah. not hard. Okay. I never. <laughs> I've heard of the word Geronimo, but I never know how to spell it. I mean, I don't even know if that's how you spell it, but it looks like it, it looks like way. Geronimo. Yeah, I, I was about to. I was like, but I got Geronimo. my own little lost, getting lost at camp story. I'm pretty sure I said it before, but I'll say it at the end. So. If you guys have any reaction requests, please follow us on social media and the link in the show. Don't forget to subscribe. Yes. Let's dive on in. If you haven't read Lord of the Flies, you're probably going to have to in movie. school one day. I've Let never me give read you an abridged version for when that time eventually comes. The Lord of the Flies is a book about a bunch of little British boys who got murdered yeah, on a deserted Lord island, Flies. and the book oh. tells the story about what the boys do to survive the it elements, was going but also crazy on that island. themselves. Really? Yes. Within like a week on the island, the boys devolve into complete savages, oh. oh. themselves in face paint and killing a pig. Oh. Mm. I said too much. And when I read the book in high school, I thought having the boys turn savage so quickly wasn't all that <laughs> accurate. As a former young boy myself, I was insulted that William Golding thought that us little boys were so heartless. But then I remembered all the things that happened at my scout camp, Camp Geronimo, <laughs> and I realized that Lord of the Flies is still inaccurate. The boys would have gone savage way faster. Listen, <laughs> really? I'm a cautious person when I'm hanging around the guys. Mm -hmm. In PE, the other boys would be playing this game called quarters, where you would fling quarters at people's knuckles until they bled. But I what? wouldn't play that game. Oh, oh no, knuckles. we had a... I'm bloody knuckles. I was about to say, bloody we knuckles. had that bloody knuckles. bloody knuckles. You didn't yeah. play like a quarter. You like, you like hit really like, hard yeah. to somebody's knuckles, like boom. What kind of and intricate scientific boom. boys yeah. were you messing with? They were playing, playing right. knuckles they and knives. Right, they oh, no, we're not going to do oh. bones. We're going to do Look, quarters. Hey, hey, like, who do you... Uh, do not dare to, to, to give me your knuckles. We have... Quarters. First of all, we didn't have quarters to fling around. Okay? Imagine if they we had blade blades. For something else. Oh no! I love blade blade. Blade blade was. I never had I, one, I, but like ooh. I always thought it was cool seeing. They it. had a little dome, and you like let it rip. All right. Yeah. Okay. Dangerous, okay. <laughs> and I'm a loser. Or when I was at a party and someone wanted to play the knife game to show off how oh, good no. their hand-eye coordination oh, was. Oh, that balance. was some crazy people stuff right there. I'm not doing that game. But something about being with the guys in the middle of the, the woods. Boys. Mm -hmm. I would live on the edge. Every summer, our troop stayed at this camp called Camp Geronimo, named after the Apache Indian who was the first person to yell Geronimo while doing a sick backflip into his pool. No. One time, me and a couple other boys, I don't remember who started it, but we were playing with matches, and oh, no. okay, I know what you're thinking, oh, but nothing bad happened, fire. okay? We mm -hmm. just accidentally lit some dry yeah. bushes on fire, exactly. and it got somewhat out of control, exactly. but it's okay, it's fine, okay? We told the scoutmaster that there was a loose fire <laughs> spreading faster than we could put it <laughs> like, out. We got everyone in the troop to stomp on it, and we never got in trouble. What were we doing with the matches? Oh, we were just lighting them and throwing them at each other. That's a game? Anyway, about 30 what? other scout troops attended oh, Camp Animal Geronimo, Crossing, and we would spend a whole week sleeping in tents and earning merit badges. Most of the camp honestly felt like school, but outside. Like, when you got to the camp, you were given a schedule of classes, and for the next seven days, you would go to those classes and learn <laughs> and fill out packets and sometimes <laughs> even have homework, which probably helped us not devolve into savages. I mean, sure, the classes weren't as boring as English or geometry. Mm -hmm. Geronimo's classes were wilderness survival, kayaking, or bare self-defense. Oh. Earning a merit badge required we two need that things. School. The first mm -hmm. thing, you had to write stuff down. Name and point out the major parts of a kayak. Mm. I have no idea. Kayak. Explain to your counselor the hazards you are most likely to encounter while participating in kayaking activities. Animals. Drowning. Bears. Uh -oh. And the second part of the uh -oh. merit badge, you had to actually go out and do stuff. Capsize the kayak, um. swim it and the paddle to the shore, and mm. if you don't make it, the bears will get you. I never got the kayaking air badge. <laughs> I mean, that is true. Bears to go to could Toronto, water. Yeah. But you could go as an 11-year-old if a parent was coming with you. Mm -hmm. And at the time, my dad was a camp counselor. My birthday oh, was May 14th, mm -hmm. and Geronimo was at the end of May, so I barely made the cutoff as the youngest person going. <laughs> Geronimo was a big step from spending three days at Cub Scout Day Camp to spending a week <laughs> in the wilderness. What made it worse was I was going to be spending a whole week with all the mean older scouts and my dad. There was this one scout named Paul. When I was 11, he was 15. So naturally, he would pick on me and make yeah. fun of me. Right. Ha ha, I get it. I'm small, mm -hmm. so I suck. But silver lining, he got fatter. And a couple years ago, he reached out to me. And I had been doing the whole YouTube thing for a while. He was oh. off starting his own business. And he wanted to do some business opportunity with me. Mm -hmm. And I just said, no. hey, do you want to do my merch? 
So now he works for me. Oh. So kids, if you ever have a movie, <laughs> just become successful on YouTube and then hire them to sell plushies. He's actually a really good merch guy. He gets all my stuff into these retail stores. So if okay. you see a floof plushie at Hot Topic, you can say, thanks, Paul. Bullies really do make a difference. <gasps> anyway, Why he looks yo, the he subtle, the, no, not even subtle, the big, that's a big flex. It is. That like, is he used a, to bully you, me, and now you work for me. And that was literally the sense of when it was like Revenge of the Nerds, and now he legit is working for you. That is Why a huge flex. Like e right, I, I know. I, know. <laughs> <laughs> Self promotion aside, my first year at Geronimo, I was a little bit on the very young side compared to everyone else. Aww. I was taking a class called Orienteering. The class taught us how to read maps and use a compass, and one day okay. it was time for our class to go on a scavenger hunt thing. We were given a list of places we had to oh, go Jesus. to, and we were supposed to use our compass and oh, counter paces to get to each specific location. Oh, then when no. we got to our destination, there would be a marker somewhere, and we would have to write down what that marker was. There were ten different going. markers that we had to find, <laughs> and the course was supposed to lead us in a circle. The leader who was in charge of our group and the compass was an older scout named... Paul. It wasn't the merch guy Paul, but oh. I think it would be funnier if it was. Our group set off to the first location. Having mm -hmm. a compass and counting your steps isn't the most accurate way of navigation, but right. we weren't allowed to use Google Maps, so. When we got to the spot, we had to look around for a little bit to find the marker, but we eventually found it, and then we were off to the second location. This time, the marker was <laughs> harder to find. The spot we landed on was pretty far from where the marker actually was. At oh, the wow. third location, we couldn't find the marker. But we did see this reflective sign on a tree, and we figured that's what the marker was supposed to be, so we wrote it down. At this point, I decided to grab my own compass and give it a try. My compass pointed in a direction that was a little bit off from Paul's direction. Uh-oh. Not by a whole lot, but just enough. <laughs> but remember, I was the little kid. So Nothing they didn't I said mattered. Them. Paul said things to me like, Oh, you don't know how to use a compass. I bet yours is broken. I'm never going to work for you one day. And you know what? I believed him. <laughs> this guy is 15 years old. Do you know how permit? wise and experienced he is? So we kept Very going little. and struggling. We used anything we found as a marker. Some piece of trash, it's a marker. Hey, this tree has an A and an M carved into a heart. Oh. Kind of weird that it's at an all-boys camp. Do you think that it's a marker? <laughs> Eventually, we all had to admit that we were completely lost. The other boys told Paul to hand over his compass, and Paul reached into his pocket, pulled out his compass, and two buzz magnets. Buzz magnets are magnets that are shaped like Yo, a bullet, and you can throw them up in the air, and they make a cool buzzing Nothing. sound. Oh. They sold them at the camp <laughs> store, so that's why Paul had them. And everyone immediately figured out why we were lost. For those of you who <laughs> don't know, magnet. Right. Magnets is a magnet. Work. Yeah. I don't know either. I think it has something to do with them coming from outer space. A compass mm -hmm. is supposed to point to the magnetic north pole, mm -hmm. and a magnet will mess up the direction a compass is and supposed to point it. in. Paul's compass wasn't pointing to his pants the whole time. We would have been suspicious if that had happened. But because his compass was right next to a magnet, mm. it got uncalibrated. <laughs> and then we all got lost in the woods and died. And that's why no. I don't have an orienteering merit badge. I was upset because my compass probably wasn't broken. <laughs> but I didn't stand up for myself. Oh. Because I don't do that. I have more Camp Geronimo stories, like the time me and my friend threw a Ziploc bag full of water at the older kids lean-to, and then I ran away so fast that I threw up. But I already did a video about that. And it's five years old, and it's very <laughs> bad, and you're not allowed to watch it. So the moral of this video is, just because you're young doesn't mean you're stupid. Thank but you. But it does mean you make bad videos on YouTube. Also, yes, check your pockets before going orienteering. Going orienteering. Sounds like a tongue twister. Going orienteering. Going orienteering. Going <laughs> orienteering. Well, that was my Camp Geronimo experience. It was uh, a Go ahead, Jazz. Let me hear that man. camp. Let me hear that camp story. We went to camp, okay. So people that may be in Maryland, y'all may have went to this camp called Camp Schmidt, okay? Probably middle school or elementary school. So I went and my dad went with me as a, um, what do they call chaperone. it? Chaperone. Chaperone, yeah. So he went with me as a chaperone. And there was a specific day <laughs> that we went out into the woods and we were supposed to find like this obstacle course thing, like where there's like a little zip line and everything. And we we're supposed to follow like this map or something to get there mm -hmm. from our lodges. And my dad was accompanied with another chaperone with somebody else's dad, and they collectively got us lost in the in the, in the woods, and we almost missed our time to go because it was like certain times we were supposed to go, and like we were wandering in the woods for like a long time trying to figure out where to go, and like I was I was real quiet back then, so it was like I knew that we was, we was lost, and like I wanted to talk to my dad and be like, 
Um, I think we're going the wrong way. Right. And my dad was like, I got it, I got it. We go, we go. I know where I'm going. Yeah, yeah. You know, Tom. You know, Tom. You know, girl. And I was like, Yo, we lost. I was about to cry. Yo, I was in there. I was like, I'm about to cry. And then uh, somebody, luckily, some other person else at the camp, like one of the counselors, found us. And then he was like, Hey, man, where are we supposed to go? <laughs> like, where are we supposed to go? I think we've been out here for this. It was way longer than that. And then he had to like escort us to the place. Jesus. But you know, you know, he, he, I, I know your dad. That's why, uh, that's why you laugh. That's why I'm laughing. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, you ain't gotta worry about it. We good. We good. Yeah. <laughs> we good. <laughs> we lost. You know, parents, man. You know, they got they, they know. I was like, I gotta listen to my dad. Right. <laughs> Hey, hey, listen, listen, you see that volcano over there? That We gonna go in there, and that's where we're supposed to be at. We're not gonna get lost. We're not gonna go in there. That volcano is perfectly... We're not gonna be out here all night. You good? <laughs> you see the storm? It's nighttime. It's all right, because guess what? The sun about to come back in five minutes. <laughs> and I'm a dad wanting no help. Like, uh, yeah, he's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... Anyway, guys, comment below let us know what you think. Don't forget to like. It's just a word. It's